to the art lab my name is Sam and today we are gonna be making some pour painting and tie-dye everyone's class should have gotten a few of these class or group or whatever um, it has all the things you need for eight or ten people to do tie-dye and pour painting so let's open it up and see the supplies that we have we are gonna start off with tie-dye so what you need for this is your tray in we are going to be using this tray for our pour painting and our tie-dye. So make sure when you're done using it, you don't crumple it up or throw it away or rip it up. Treat it really good, all right? So everybody gets a silver tray. Everybody gets a t-shirt. You can discuss sizes and stuff with your teacher. And then everyone also gets a Ziploc bag. with care instructions attached to it. So this is what you're gonna do after you're done dyeing your shirt and you're gonna bring it home to rinse. And um, yes, and then everyone gets a dropper. So these are droppers, you squeeze it to get the dye inside of it. And then there's a bag of elastics. You guys just use them as needed. Some people might use three, some people might use eight. It's all gonna vary. Just take what you need out of these. And then the other things that we need that we're gonna be using as a group are, here is our tie-dye here. So there's four jars, four different colors, and the powder is already measured out and in there for you. All you have to do is take some hot water or like warm hot, just put on the hot tap and fill it just about here, just below the, uh, the rim, all right? And then you can mix it up Put your droppers inside the cups and we are ready to start dyeing okay the other thing that we need to do is we need a bowl of warm to hot water any big bowl that you have that can fit your t-shirt in that will do so um any like kind of like salad bowl or mixing bowl will work anything you have in your class or home that will work good and you're gonna dissolve the soda ash inside of it so this stuff is called soda ash it's like a baking soda kind of washing uh powder yeah and that just breaks down the fabric that you're using so that the colors can soak right in really deep and you will have really bright colors for your t-shirt all right so get this stuff out of your pack and we can get started on tie-dye so before we begin the dyeing process we are just going to be needing some elastics and our shirt. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you three different ways you can fold your shirt to make a cool tie-dye design. So I'm gonna show you is really easy. Pretty much you lay your shirt out flat. This method is called the bullseye method. Then you find a point in the middle. I'm kind of showing the top half of the shirt here. But you find a point in the middle, pinch it, and you just pull it up like this. So I'm just kind of lifting it up like this and then you pull it down to kind of make a long snake shape like this. And then you get your elastics and you tie it around. I'm just gonna wrap it around three times. Sometimes people have a hard time with this part. Find someone who knows how to do it to help you out if you're struggling. But with a bit of practice, honestly, anyone can do this. You just wrap your elastic around so now you have the choice if you want to make like three spaces, four spaces, five spaces, six spaces, as many as you want. I think I'm going to make like four or five. You just kind of tie it up so there's no loose ends. See how this is like all floppy and stuff? You are going to want to add one at the bottom keep everything together. And here is an example of what it will look like. And there you go. And then you would proceed to dye these different sections, different colors. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you two more ways to dye this. So let's take our elastics off. And this is what the next one can look like. Next method is called stripe method. So this one's really easy. Essentially, you just like fan it up, scrunch it up. You could roll it up. That would create an ombre kind of look if you rolled it up. 
but I'm just gonna kind of scrunch it like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then the same with the bullseye. I'm just gonna kind of tie it into sections like this. You just keep going all the way across. This one you usually need more elastics just because it's longer this way. I'm gonna tuck my little sleeve in here. And there you go. So this one is the stripe method. So once again, we'd be doing different colors in each section, but I will show you that in a little bit. All right, and then the last method, this one's a little bit more challenging, but it's also very cool. So let's try that one. This last method is called the spiral method. Lay out your shirt. And just like the bullseye one, you're gonna wanna find a section of the shirt. It can literally be anywhere. I like to do the middle. And you're just gonna pinch it like this and twist it around, almost like you're putting spaghetti on a fork or like you're creating a cinnamon roll shape like this. And then when you get it around and you have these kind of like floppy pieces, you just kind of form it around in a circle. Like I said, this one is tricky. So you might need a pal to help you finish this one. Maybe an extra set of hands would be nice. I have done this so many times now that I'm pretty pro. So I just put my elastic across like that. You can double it up. I would actually double it up. And you're gonna wanna make like pizza slices or like pie slices. Let's say pizza because this is winter and we know pizza. So I'm gonna go across the other way and then I'm gonna put one more elastic on like this just to keep everything in place. If it's kind of messy and it's not perfect, honestly, it will. it's still gonna turn out cool. Watch, I will show you how that's gonna happen. Tie-dye is not meant to be perfect. You can literally fold this any way you want and it will probably turn out cool. So there we go. If you want need to adjust anything to keep it in more snug, there you go. That's how you make the bullseye. Okay, I got my bowl of water ready. Your bowl doesn't have to be this big. You could even use a bin, uh, Tupperware, um, just so you have like at least like 10 cups of water, I would say, maybe like a liter. And it needs to be hot, hot water, okay? Not like burning your skin, but hot enough, you know? Okay, so I have my bowl of water here. The next thing I need is this little soda ash thing. Like I said, this breaks down the fabric a little bit. Um, when you get a new shirt, it's kind of like soft and shiny, you know? So when you use this, it kind of takes that layer off that makes it so soft just so that the dye can get through to the cotton and get into the fabric. Also, if you plan on doing anything with extra dye, make sure whatever you're dyeing is 100% cotton. All right, so all you gotta do, pop the lid off, dump it in, and use a spoon or something to mix it up. So my water's a little cloudy. Make sure you t touch it before you um, just like stick your hands in there in case it's hot. All right. Now, one by one, we are gonna take our shirt that's all tied up and doesn't have any loose ends, and we are gonna put it in the water. The water's too hot, add a little bit of cool water, but you wanna do this while the water is warm. This is gonna really take your tie-dye to the next level. You don't wanna skip this step. So just to make sure the, the water gets in all the cracks, you're gonna to wanna to squeeze it around a bit to make sure the shirt gets super wet. Cause sometimes you can stick it in the water and sometimes the water doesn't get all the way in and then the dye doesn't go in as evenly. So make sure it's nice and soaked. You can even drop it in there for a little bit. Get your shirt perfectly wet, very wet. And then when your shirt's soaked, you squeeze it so much. The more water you squeeze out, the brighter the colors will end up on your shirt. So make sure you squeeze it really good. And if there is like a super strong person, they can help you squeeze out your shirt if you're not sure if it's enough. Okay, so as soon as you're done squeezing out your shirt, it's all done. We're ready to dye our shirt. We are gonna get our trusty tray and put it inside like that. 
all right so go ahead get everyone to tie their shirts soak their shirts and put it in their trays and press play when you're ready for the next step for our next step what you need to do is you need to fill up your jars with warm to hot water all right i already told you about this step if you haven't done it yet go and do it okay and then i already mixed mine up here once everyone's shirts are wet so you can get rid of this all right once everybody's droppers are in here make sure you wash and sanitize your hands it may feel a little bit um kind of like a slimy feeling from the soda ash in the water giving your hands a quick rinse that will get rid of that right away and now that we have our shirt we can just enjoy ourselves sit around and have fun coloring our shirts so all you have to do is take your dropper squeeze it dip it in the dye and it's going to fill up like that I'm choosing to leave mine in the spiral shape, but pretty much you wanna really cover your shirt as much as you can. And you also want to get into the cracks. So see how I'm opening up a crack? Just opening it, filling it up. This is gonna make your colors much more deep. So make sure you add a lot of dye. If you're doing this in a group of eight to 10 or whatever, you just keep going till there's no dye left. My only suggestion is I wouldn't pile all the colors on top of each other. So I wouldn't put blue, I wouldn't put orange here and pink and green. It's gonna make a brown color and it's gonna look muddy, which if that's what you're going for, like a grunge muddy look, then cool, go for it. But I find um, if you wanna keep your colors bright and separate to make sure you do it in the sections. So just like the other shirt where it was kind of long and there was like one section, two section, three. So that is where you would do one blue, one green, one pink, and so on. And once you're done fully soaking one side, you're gonna take your shirt, you're gonna flip it over and do it to the side as well. All right, so go ahead. I'm gonna take my time, cover my whole shirt in tie dye and then we can show you what we're gonna do next. Go ahead, press pause and enjoy dyeing your shirt. Okay, my shirt is fully covered in dye. It is very, very colorful. Now all we have to do is wait. So while I'm waiting, what I wanna do is I wanna take my bag and I'm gonna carefully put my shirt into this bag so we can let it soak for a little bit. And after we're done that, we can rinse out our tray and get ready for our next activity, all right? There we go, just put it in like that. And we are gonna let this soak until either the end of the day or the next morning. Just gonna close it up, seal it up. And now I'm gonna let this soak for a few hours anyways. Okay, so if you have leftover tie-dye, please save this. You can do this again. This tie-dye still works really good. Um, even if you don't have the soda ash, uh, definitely save this. You can use this for all kinds of activities, for dyeing sand, for painting. Oh my gosh, so many activities to be done with this. You don't have to throw it out. Just put the lids on your jar and save them for something else. All right, while we are waiting for our tie-dye to set, Let's get started on our next activity, which is my favorite, pour painting. So for pour painting, I don't know if you've ever done this before, it's beginner, so if you don't know how to do this, don't worry. Everyone's is gonna be different and it's really easy. For this, you need your canvas. Some of them are wrapped in plastic, so you're just gonna wanna take the plastic off. So if you forget to take the plastic off, oh my gosh, that will be good. And there you go. So everyone has a canvas. You're gonna take the same tray that you used for your tie-dye, rinse it out, and put your painting inside. And then you have four colors here. You're gonna need your four colors. Everyone gets a white, a yellow, a red, and a blue. And then we're gonna need the silicone oil, but we're all gonna share this one. Everyone also needs four cups. and four stir sticks. So I just put four out and put my stir sticks like that. 
and everyone needs one dropper once again from tie-dye rinse it out good with some water and we're going to be using this for our floor painting okay so go ahead get everything out like i said everyone should have four cups four stir sticks one paint color each a tray with a canvas in it and we're all gonna share this oil okay go ahead press pause get everything ready and press play again when you're ready to start And one very important ingredient I forgot is this bottle of liquid. Yes, we definitely need this. I forgot to say, get this. This is a paint thinner and it is gonna make our paint nice and runny. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is focus on our paints. I'm gonna put my paint out in front of me like this. Using my dropper, I'm just gonna make sure the tip of it is all the way submerged in the liquid and I'm gonna squeeze it and watch it fill up. I'm gonna be adding um, about 10, eight to 10 squirts in each color, okay? I'm gonna slowly start off by adding a couple to each paint at a time and then stirring it in with my stir sticks. But at the end, you're gonna to wanna to have about eight to 10 full squirts of this liquid in each one of your paints and mix it in. All right, and once you have your liquid in there, you're gonna use your stir sticks and slowly, not crazy, because your paint is gonna fly everywhere, you're just gonna slowly mix it in. And you're gonna notice that your paint is gonna get much runnier. So keep mixing. See how this is kind of chunky looking still? Keep mixing until it's completely smooth. Press pause and thin out your paint. Now that my paints are nice and runny, I am going to take my four cups and use these paints to mix new colors in these four cups. So if you know anything about color mixing, I'm gonna make an orange. So I'm gonna pour like a little bit of red in here you can put your sticks off to the side if you want. I'm gonna put a little yellow in there. And then I'm gonna make a green, I think. So how do you make green? Yep, some blue and some yellow. If you wanna make like a lime green, you're gonna to wanna to add a lot more yellow than blue, but have a feeling I don't have enough yellow to make a super lime. Okay, and then I want to do like a purple color. So I'm gonna do all my red. You can use your stick to like scrape it in. For purple, it's like mostly red, a little bit of blue. And then in this cup, I think I'm just gonna do plain white actually. I actually recommend doing one cup, just plain white. But if you don't want to do that, you do not have to. Okay, so I have a white cup. This one's purple. I'm just gonna mix it up. All right, so now this is a fun part, guys. Get your four cups and use your little cups of paint to mix new colors, okay? And these are the colors that we are gonna be using for the pour painting. All right, so if you don't wanna create new colors, you wanna use the primary colors then you can just go ahead and scrape each color into your new cups. It's going to uh, work awesome with just the primary colors as well. Okay, so go ahead, press pause, mix your colors up and come on back when you have all your colors mixed in really good. So here are the colors that I made. I have a purple, a cool like teal color, an orange and a white. So once I'm sure they're mixed up, if your paint still feels a bit thick, go ahead and add another squirt in. You want it to be pretty runny, but not like water, but kind of like, like a yogurt drink, you know, or like a thick kind of like a cream of mushroom soup, like runny, but not too runny, not like water, you know what I mean? This takes a bit of practice, and honestly, sometimes you can't even guarantee the result. Okay, so.
So once everything is mixed up good, you know it's mixed up really good, you're gonna wanna ditch your sticks. You can put them in the bottom of your tray. And we are gonna add the secret ingredient. So go ahead and take out your silicone oil. I'm gonna pick one of the colors. I'm gonna go with white. So pick which color you wanna add your oil to and you're just gonna add about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about like eight to 10 little drops. So either the drops might be coming out of here or the drops could be coming, you could use your pipette if you want to get it out of the bottle. All I know is you need like eight to 10 drops. Okay, so go ahead, press pause, add oil to only one of your paintings, to only one of your paints, sorry. Go ahead, press play when you're ready. Now it's time to layer our paint. I'm gonna layer every color into the cup that has the oil in it. So if you remember, I put the oil in my white cup. So now I'm just gonna use the rest of the paint and I'm gonna start slowly pouring a little bit of each color into the one cup. So I'm pouring it all into my white cup, a little bit at a time and very, very important, we are not gonna be mixing this up. We are just pouring it right in. Doesn't matter what order you do or how much you do. You can do this however you want. You can go in circles like this if you like. I'm just gonna keep going until I have no paint left. Just let it all drip out. even gonna add this extra paint. I'm gonna scrape it out of my sample cup because I don't wanna waste a thing. Any extra paint you have, put it in your cup. Just do not mix it. Perfect. So your cup should be looking something like this. Go ahead, press pause and layer all of your colors into one cup. And then you're gonna wanna clear away your mess and get your tray ready with your canvas on it. All right, go ahead, do that, press play when you're ready. Okay, so this part can be a little bit tricky, but don't be afraid, you can totally do this. And also warning, I would do it one at a time because your hands are gonna get really covered in paint a little bit and you're gonna have to be able to wash them once you're done. So take your time on this and watch what I do first before you start. Okay, so you're gonna wanna flip your canvas over like this. Put your cup in the middle of your tray. Put your canvas on your cup. Don't slam it down, you might knock your cup over. Place it over gently. See when you press down, you can kinda see where the rim is. You're gonna place one hand on there. Once again, not crushing. We don't wanna crush our cup underneath. We're gonna hold our cup with the other hand and slowly, keeping it sealed, we are gonna flip our cup over like that. Do it nice and slow. You don't have to do it fast. Your paint's not gonna fly everywhere. And if it does come out the side or spill a little bit, that's okay. Just go with the flow, all right? Let me show you what's gonna happen if it doesn't spill. But if it does, you just do the same thing following this step. So once your cup is flipped over, you're gonna give it a couple taps. Make sure all the paint is gone down. Gentle, gentle, gentle. And then let's get ready for the magical part. We are going to be pulling the cup off and letting all the paint out, just lifting it right off. Wow, check it out. Oh my gosh, they look, this looks so cool. Okay, you can either pick up your canvas to move around, but if you want, you can just pick up your tray and move it around. So let's make sure we got a good, there we go. And I'm gonna slowly bring it to one corner at a time. So you don't wanna pour it all off of one corner. So as soon as it hits, you're gonna wanna go for the next corner. Whoa, do you see all these amazing colors coming through? Wanna go all the way till it just goes right off the edge. Okay, and then we're gonna flip. 
we're gonna let the paint stretch all the way to the other side until it covers the whole canvas. This one is a very slow painting. And then once it reaches the corner, you can have it going back the other direction if you want to move your painting around a little bit. If your painting's really runny, you're not going to want to just like run it all over the place. But there you go. Oh my gosh, guys, this is seriously a masterpiece. Look at that. And this color, these colors go perfectly with my house. They're like jewel tones. I am so excited. Okay, so guys, go ahead, do yours. Don't worry if your cup starts spilling out right when you flip it over, that's okay. Just get the rest out of your cup, move it, your cup out of your way, and then move it around. And then you're gonna wanna let it dry flat, okay? So I would leave this in the container until tomorrow. And then tomorrow I would take it out and put it on a garbage bag or something to further finish drying. And I would keep the cup if I was you because look how cool that is. You can put pencils in it, you can put your stuff in it. Uh, I really love it. All right, so this is poor painting. Great job, everybody. And we still have to check on our tie-dye. Let's check out our tie-dye. Once you are done waiting about like six to eight hours. So if you did this in the morning, you could finish it later in the day. If not, just keep it in your bag until the next morning. But once you wait, all you have to do is run your t-shirt under cold water until it runs clear. So if you're doing this at your school or at your house, make sure when you're rinsing it, you don't get tie-dye everywhere or you wipe it up right away because I'm sure the janitor wouldn't like it very much if there was tie-dye all over the bathroom. So make sure when you're going to dye your shirt, you keep your place nice and neat and you rinse it until the water runs clear. I'm gonna go do mine and come back and meet me here and let's open our shirts together. Okay, I have rinsed my shirt. The water is running clear. Let's open it up and see it. This is my favorite part. You can cut the elastics off if you want, or you can pull them off and reuse them. I like to pull them off and reuse them. All right, here we go. It's already opening up. Oh my goodness, so awesome. So this one is the swirl design. This was the last one I showed you. I wonder how your shirts are looking, but isn't mine incredible? Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Thank you so much for tie dyeing with me, guys. All you have to do now is put this in your Ziploc bag and you can bring it home. Make sure you tell your parents the first time they wash it, it should be by itself, okay? Because you might stain your white clothes if you didn't rinse it good enough. All right, so all you gotta do now is you can actually leave it to dry hanging in your class if you want but otherwise just throw it in a bag and bring it home and wear it. Thanks guys, see you next time, bye. bye.